She was a shy teenager thrust into the spotlight who became the most photographed woman in the world. But behind the glitz and glamour, a tale of love, heartbreak, and ultimate sacrifice unfolded. This is the story of Diana, the people's princess who changed the face of royalty forever. Princess Diana was born on July 1st, 1961 in Sandringham, England to a wealthy and noble family. Growing up on the Queen's estate, she had two older sisters and a younger brother. Diana's childhood was marked by her parents' divorce, which affected her deeply. Though not academically inclined, she excelled in sports, particularly swimming, and enjoyed music and dancing. As a teenager, Diana worked as a nanny and teacher's assistant, where her kind nature shone through despite her shyness, endearing her to those around her. Diana met Prince Charles when she was 16, but they didn't start dating until a few years later. Her early life was mostly quiet and normal for someone from her background, but it would soon change dramatically when she entered the royal spotlight. Diana married Prince Charles on July 29, 1981, in a lavish ceremony at St. Paul's Cathedral in London. The wedding was watched by millions of people worldwide and was called a fairy tale wedding. Diana was just 20 years old when she married Charles, who was 32. Their courtship was brief and they had only met a few times before getting engaged. At first, the marriage seemed happy and they had two sons, Prince William in 1982 and Prince Harry in 1984. However, behind the scenes, the marriage faced many problems. Did you find it a very hard decision, Lady Diana? I had a long time to think about it, because I knew the pressure was on both of us. Charles and Diana had different interests and personalities. There were also rumors of infidelity on both sides. As time went on, their marriage troubles became public knowledge. They separated in 1992 and officially divorced in 1996. Despite the difficulties in their marriage, Diana remained popular with the public. She continued her charity work and maintained a high profile until her death in 1997. The marriage of Charles and Diana, while initially seen as a romantic fairy tale, ultimately became a source of controversy for the royal family and changed public perceptions of the monarchy. While marrying into the royal family gave Princess Diana access to some spectacular properties, the homes she lived in before her wedding to Prince Charles were equally impressive. Throughout her life, the Princess of Wales lived in quite a few regal residences, including estates owned by both sides of her family, a flat in London, and several properties owned by the Crown. Princess Diana's primary residence during her marriage and after her divorce was Kensington Palace in London. Her home was called Apartments 8 and 9, but it wasn't like normal apartments. It was huge. It had three floors and lots of rooms. Diana made her home feel cozy and pretty. She used soft colors like pink, blue, and green. Her living room had comfy sofas and lots of family photos. She had a special room where she worked, which was bright yellow and cheerful. The whole top floor was for her sons, William and Harry. It was like a giant playroom for them. Diana picked out all the furniture and decorations herself. She liked to mix old royal things with new modern stuff. Even though it was in a palace, Diana's home felt warm and welcoming. She wanted it to be a happy place for her family. After Diana and Prince Charles split up, she kept living there. It was her special place where she could relax and be herself. Her home showed how Diana could make even a big palace feel like a real family home. Princess Diana's wardrobe was truly fit for royalty, filled with designer pieces and custom-made outfits that would make any fashion lover swoon. Her closet was like a treasure trove of high-end fashion worth millions of pounds. Diana had a particular love for certain designers. She adored Catherine Walker and owned over 1,000 of her pieces. These weren't just any dresses, they were often hand-beaded and could cost upwards of 40,000 pounds each. Imagine having a thousand of those. Her collection of evening gowns was spectacular. She had stunning pieces from designers like Victor Edelstein, including the famous velvet gown she wore while dancing with John Travolta at the White House. These gowns often cost tens of thousands of pounds each. Diana's daywear was no less impressive. She had a vast collection of Chanel suits, each worth thousands. Her casual wear included luxury brands like Versace and Dior. Even her casual clothes were top-of-the-line designer pieces. Let's not forget her accessories. Diana's handbag collection was enviable, featuring numerous Chanel, Gucci, and Dior bags. Each of these could easily cost several thousand pounds. Her shoe collection was equally impressive, with rows of Jimmy Choo's and Manolo Blahniks. 
While the exact value of Diana's entire wardrobe is hard to pinpoint, it's safe to say it was worth several million pounds. After her death, many of her most iconic pieces were auctioned for charity, fetching astronomical prices and showing just how valuable and cherished her wardrobe truly was. Diana's expensive closet wasn't just about luxury, it was a tool she used to make statements, support British fashion, and capture the world's attention for the causes she cared about. Princess had an amazing collection of jewelry that was fit for a royal. Her collection was a mix of pieces she got as gifts, some she borrowed from the royal family, and others she bought herself. One of the most famous pieces was her engagement ring. This was valued at £28,000 in 1981. That's over £100,000 in today's money. It had a big blue sapphire surrounded by diamonds. This ring became super famous and is now worn by Kate Middleton, but that's not it. Diana loved tiaras. The Spencer tiara was a family heirloom she wore on her wedding day. Another favorite was the Lover's Knot tiara, which had lots of pearls and diamonds. She had some really impressive necklaces. There was a seven-strand pearl choker with a big sapphire in the middle that she often wore. She also had a stunning emerald and diamond necklace that she sometimes wore as a headband. Diana was known for her love of pearls. She had many pearl necklaces and earrings that she wore all the time. One special pair of pearl earrings became her trademark look. She also had beautiful watches, including a gold Patek Philippe watch that was a gift from her father. Diana liked to mix things up. She would often take apart her jewelry and remake it into new pieces. This showed how creative she was with her style. But life wasn't always easy for Diana, even with all these nice things. Her life was marked by several tragic incidents that shaped her public image and personal struggles. One of the most significant was the breakdown of her marriage to Prince Charles. What began as a fairy tale wedding watched by millions worldwide in 1981 quickly turned into a loveless union. Diana discovered that Charles was still in love with Camilla Parker Bowles, leading to feelings of rejection and loneliness. The couple's incompatibility and Charles's ongoing relationship with Camilla caused Diana great emotional pain eventually resulting in their separation in 1992 and divorce in 1996. This public dissolution of their marriage was a source of intense media scrutiny and personal anguish for Diana. Perhaps the most tragic event was Diana's untimely death in a car crash in Paris on August 31, 1997. At just 36 years old, Diana's life was cut short in a tragic accident while being pursued by paparazzi. The circumstances of her death underscored the relentless pressure she faced from the media throughout her life. The news of her passing shocked the world and led to an unprecedented outpouring of public grief. Diana's death not only robbed her of the chance to see her sons grow up, but also deprived the world of her continued humanitarian efforts and the positive impact she had on so many lives. Remember, history is full of amazing stories just waiting to be discovered. So stay curious and who knows what incredible tales we'll uncover next time. See you in our next video! Princess Beatrice and Eduardo Mapelli Mozzi married in a private ceremony on July 17, 2020. The wedding took place at the Royal Chapel of All Saints in Windsor, a contrast to the grand royal weddings we've come to expect. But how did this love story begin? And what made this royal wedding so unique? Edo's father, Alessandro Mapelli Mozzi, is a former British Olympian who represented the country in alpine skiing at the 1972 Winter Olympics. This connection to both British sports and Italian nobility added an intriguing dimension to the couple's background. Rumors of their relationship had been swirling since 2018, with sources close to the couple hinting at a serious connection. A 2018 article in The Sun stated that Beatrice had officially told her friends about the relationship. An insider revealed, things are moving very quickly and it wouldn't surprise anyone if they got engaged within a short period of time. As their romance blossomed, Beatrice and Edo began attending high-profile events together. In 2019, they traveled to the Middle East for the Bahrain Grand Prix, joining other members of the royal family to watch the Formula One championship race. The Duchess of York even took a selfie with her daughter and champion horse jockey Frankie de Tori. In September 2019, Ido proposed to Beatrice during a romantic trip to Italy. The engagement ring, a stunning piece designed by the British jeweler Sean Lean, featured a central, round, brilliant cut diamond surrounded by tapered baguettes on a platinum band. Experts estimated its value at around $130,000. The ring bears a similarity to Queen Elizabeth II's engagement ring. The couple's joy was palpable in their joint statement. We are both so excited to be embarking on this life adventure together and can't wait to be married. We share so many similar interests and values, and we know this will stand us in great stead for the years ahead, full of love and happiness. Beatrice's parents were equally thrilled. 
Sarah Ferguson took to Twitter to express her emotions. I know what a mother feels, so I have tears of joy. I am so proud of this sensational news. She added that she and Prince Andrew were the luckiest people ever to have two great sons-in-law. Edo shared a heartfelt message on Instagram. You will never be alone, my love. My heart is your home. Hand in hand today, tomorrow, and forever. Beatrice echoed the sentiment on Twitter, simply stating, I'm so excited to announce my engagement to Edo. Initially, the wedding was set for May 29th, 2020, at the Chapel Royal in St. James's Palace, followed by a reception in the gardens of Buckingham Palace. However, the COVID-19 pandemic threw a wrench in these plans. They decided to hold a smaller, more intimate ceremony. The guest list consisted of just 20 people, including the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. The venue was changed to the Royal Chapel of All Saints on the grounds of Royal Lodge, Windsor, a private estate with deep family connections. The wedding plans had to change due to COVID-19 rules. Instead of 150 guests, only a small group could attend, and they couldn't sing the usual songs during the ceremony. However, these changes allowed for some special exceptions. Prince Andrew walked his daughter down the aisle, a tradition that had been restricted at the time. This exception was made possible because the Duke of York had reportedly been isolating prior to the ceremony. Despite the pandemic, the wedding was nothing short of magical. Princess Beatrice broke with several royal traditions, creating a ceremony that was uniquely her own. In a tribute to her grandmother, Beatrice wore a vintage Norman Hartnell dress belonging to the Queen. The ivory peau de soie taffeta gown, which the Queen had worn to the premiere of Lawrence of Arabia in 1962, was remodeled and fitted by Angela Kelly and Stuart Parvin to suit the bride perfectly. The dress modification included the addition of organza sleeves and a redesign of the voluminous skirt. The exquisitely detailed gown featured a square neckline, diamante adornments, and a geometric checked bodice, all trimmed with ivory duchess satin. But the something borrowed didn't stop there. Beatrice also wore the Queen Mary diamond fringe tiara, the same tiara Queen Elizabeth wore on her wedding day in 1947. The tiara, originally created in 1919 for Queen Mary from a necklace given to her by Queen Victoria, has a rich history. It was passed down to the Queen Mother, who lent it to her daughter Elizabeth for her wedding day. The 47 graduated bars of the tiara can also be worn as a necklace, showcasing its versatility. Breaking another royal tradition, Beatrice chose to wear her hair down instead of in the customary updo. This decision was seen as a modern twist on royal bridal style. She also opted for a platinum wedding band designed by Sean Lean, rather than the traditional Welsh gold ring often favored by royal brides. Edo's ring was a vintage gold band designed by Josh Collins. The floral arrangements for the wedding were equally stunning. A magnificent floral arch covered the entrance to the royal chapel, designed by Dutch florist Rob Van Helden. The arch featured hundreds of delicate peach, pink, and ivory roses, pale pink hydrangeas, trailing jasmine, and pink astilbe, along with exquisite foliage collected from Windsor Great Park. Beatrice's bouquet, created by Patrice Van Helden of RVH Floral Design, was a beautiful mix of trailing jasmine, pale pink and cream sweet peas, royal porcelain ivory spray roses, pink O'Hara garden roses, pink wax flower, and baby pink astilbe. In keeping with royal tradition, it also included sprigs of myrtle, a symbol of hope and love that has been included in royal bouquets since Queen Victoria's time. The ceremony itself was intimate and heartfelt. In accordance with government guidelines, no hymns were sung, but music was played, including the national anthem. The Reverend Canon Paul Wright, sub-dean of the Chapel Royal, and the Reverend Canon Martin Pohl, domestic chaplain to Her Majesty the Queen, officiated the ceremony. The couple's mothers read two of their favorite poems, Sonnet 116 by William Shakespeare and I Carry Your Heart With Me by E.E. E. Cummings. A reading from the first epistle to the Corinthians was also included. These literary selections added a personal touch to the proceedings, reflecting the couple's love of literature and their desire for a meaningful ceremony. Following royal tradition, Beatrice's bouquet was later placed on the tomb of the unknown warrior at Westminster Abbey. This gesture dates back to the Queen Mother's wedding. After the ceremony, a small reception was held at Royal Lodge, featuring a marquee filled with sofas, a jukebox, and even a dartboard. The relaxed atmosphere perfectly captured the couple's desire for an intimate, personal celebration. Reports suggest that the reception included draft beer, and that guests stayed in glamping pods on the estate until the next morning, showcasing an innovative way to adapt to the ongoing pandemic restrictions. The wedding may have been small, but its impact was significant. 
It showed that even in challenging times, love can triumph and traditions can be adapted to create something truly special. The official wedding photos taken by Benjamin Wheeler were released in the days following the ceremony. Two of the photos were taken in front of the chapel, with one featuring the Queen and Prince Philip at a distance. In September 2021, the couple welcomed their daughter, Sienna Elizabeth Mapelli Mozzi. The royal family's Twitter account officially announced the birth, stating that the parents and their newborn daughter were all doing well. The arrival of their baby girl marked a new chapter in their lives, with the couple expressing their joy and gratitude. Edo has proven to be a sentimental and devoted husband. In an interview with the Financial Times, he revealed that the kitchen has become the epicenter of their family life, where they come together for every meal. He and Beatrice even grow their own vegetables. Despite their royal status, the couple has chosen to keep much of their personal life private. They've shared limited photos of their daughter Sienna, preferring to keep her out of the spotlight. That marks the end of this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to Infinite Lux for more incredible videos. Yes, there's a hidden story behind her beautiful wedding dress. In this video, we will show you the details of Princess Eugenie's wedding and reception, sharing fascinating facts and behind the scenes moments that made her day truly magical. Princess Eugenie's love story began in 2010 at a music festival. Eugenie, the youngest daughter of Prince Andrew and Sarah, Duchess of York, met Jack Brooksbank, a charming man who worked in the hospitality industry. Their connection was very immediate. They started dating and their relationship grew stronger over the years. They enjoyed many happy moments together, from traveling around the world to cozy dinners in London. Their love story was one of genuine affection and shared happiness. In January 2018, Jack Brooksbank proposed to Eugenie during a trip to Nicaragua. They were staying at the luxurious Chateau de Varenne, a beautiful estate surrounded by lush nature. Jack proposed in a private setting on the grounds of the estate. He chose a stunning sapphire engagement ring, a nod to Princess Eugenie's birthstone. The proposal was romantic and Princess Eugenie was thrilled, but the couple announced their engagement to the world on January 22, 2018. The announcement was made through a beautiful photo shared by Princess Eugenie on social media. The picture showed her dazzling engagement ring and her joy at the moment. The news was met with excitement from the public and the media. People were eager to know more about the upcoming royal wedding and the details of the grand event. The day of Princess Eugenie's wedding was a bright and beautiful autumn day. The ceremony took place at St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle, a historic setting for the royal nuptials. Princess Eugenie arrived at St. George's Chapel in a magnificent car. She traveled with her father, Prince Andrew, in a classic 1977 Aston Martin DB6, which was a touching tribute to the 1960s wedding car used by her mother, Sarah, Duchess of York. The car was beautifully decorated with flowers, and the sight of Princess Eugenie in her wedding gown was breathtaking. The dress of the princess was very attractive. Princess Eugenie wore a stunning wedding dress designed by Peter Pilato and Christopher de Vos. The dress was elegant and sophisticated with a classic silhouette and intricate detailing. Princess Eugenie's wedding dress was not just a beautiful outfit. It was a symbol of family history and personal significance. Designed by Peter Pilato and Christopher de Vos, the dress was a perfect blend of elegance and meaning. The wedding ceremony was filled with royal traditions. The service was conducted by the Dean of Windsor, and the guests included many members of the royal family and close friends. The chapel was decorated with beautiful flowers, and the atmosphere was filled with joy and excitement. The couple exchanged vows and rings in front of their loved ones, marking the beginning of their married life. Princess Eugenie's wedding was attended by many famous faces. Celebrities from different fields, including actors, musicians, and designers, were present to celebrate the special day. Some notable guests included George and Amal Clooney, David and Victoria Beckham, and Ellie Goulding. The presence of these stars added to the glamour of the event. After the ceremony, the royal couple hosted a lavish reception at the private grounds of Frogmore House, a beautiful location on the Windsor Estate. Frogmore House was beautifully decorated for the occasion. The venue was adorned with elegant floral arrangements and intricate table settings. Guests enjoyed a delicious meal prepared by a renowned catering team. The atmosphere was warm and inviting, with stunning views of the surrounding gardens. The food was carefully chosen to offer a delightful dining experience for the guests. Some of the highlights of the menu included canapes, a selection of fine wines, and a beautifully crafted wedding cake. The wedding cake was a masterpiece designed by Sophie Cabot. The cake was a classic multi-tiered creation decorated with elegant floral patterns. 
The cake was not only beautiful, but also delicious, with flavors that delighted the guests. It was a centerpiece of the reception and a symbol of the couple's sweet beginning. The reception was filled with laughter, dancing, and joyful moments. The couple shared their first dance as husband and wife, and the guests joined in to celebrate the newlyweds. The atmosphere was festive, with music and entertainment that kept everyone in high spirits throughout the evening. Princess Eugenie's wedding was filled with personal touches and meaningful details that made the day extra special. During the ceremony, Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooksbank wrote their own vows. Their vows were heartfelt and personal, reflecting their deep love and commitment to each other. This personal touch made the ceremony even more meaningful and memorable for everyone present. Princess Eugenie's wedding bouquet was designed to include a mix of beautiful flowers. The bouquet featured myrtle, which is a traditional flower used in royal weddings, as well as other lovely blooms. The bouquet was a stunning accessory that complemented Princess Eugenie's elegant dress. The wedding included several tributes to Princess Eugenie's family. Her sister, Princess Beatrice, served as her maid of honor, and her parents played important roles in the ceremony. These family moments added a personal and emotional touch to the celebration. The couple shared a wedding video that captured the highlights of their special day. The video showed the beautiful moments of the ceremony and the joy of the reception. The video allowed people to experience the magic of the wedding even if they couldn't attend in person. Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooksbank began their married life with a sense of excitement and happiness. After the wedding, the couple enjoyed their honeymoon and began their life as a married couple. They continued to support each other and grow in their personal and professional lives. As a royal couple, they were involved in various charitable activities and royal duties. They worked together to support causes they care about and contribute to the community. Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooksbank's wedding was the start of a new chapter filled with love and hope. Their fairy tale wedding was a beautiful celebration of their love story. The wedding remains a cherished memory for everyone who attended and for those who followed the story. It was a day of joy, romance, and royal elegance. Princess Eugenie's wedding was a fairy tale event filled with romance, elegance, and joy. From the magical proposal to the stunning wedding dress and the grand reception, Every detail was a testament to the love and happiness shared by the couple. The wedding was a day that captured the hearts of many. It was a beautiful celebration of love and a moment that will be remembered for years to come. It was a day of celebration and happiness that marked the beginning of their married life. Princess Eugenie's wedding is an inspiring story of love and commitment. It reminds us of the beauty of finding a soulmate and celebrating that love with the world. What was your favorite part of Princess Eugenie's fairy tale wedding? Did you enjoy learning about the special details of the wedding dress and the reception? How do you feel about the royal traditions and personal touches in the wedding? Give your views in the comment section below. Thank you for joining us on this journey through Princess Eugenie's fairy tale wedding. We hope you enjoy discovering the magical moments of this special day. We will catch you in the next one and don't forget to hit like and subscribe to our channel. Princess Margaret, sister to Queen Elizabeth II, was no ordinary royal. She was totally different from what the typical royalties looked like. While her sibling ascended the throne, Margaret took to legendary status in high society, leaving a trail of broken hearts, empty champagne bottles, and shocked courtiers with her style. Born on August 21, 1930 at Glamis Castle in Scotland, Princess Margaret Rose was destined for a life of royalty, luxury, and controversy. As the younger sister of Queen Elizabeth II, she lived in the spotlight from birth, captivating the public with her beauty, charm, and rebellious spirit. Even as a child, Margaret's personality diverged from her more reserved sister Elizabeth, yet they were super close and looked out for each other. She and her sister Elizabeth enjoyed swimming and were often seen playing piano together. The princess received her education at Buckingham Palace and later moved to Windsor Castle during World War II for safety. While Elizabeth was more reserved and sophisticated, Margaret was fond of making the most of her time. Her difference from her sister from an early age were the signs about how she would become a captivating figure for the whole world. As Margaret blossomed into adulthood, her rebellious spirit and love for the finer things in life began to truly shine. In the 1950s, the princess blossomed into one of the world's most famous socialites, and her lifestyle was the true example of luxury and glamour. She was often seen at the most exclusive parties, rubbing shoulders with celebrities, artists, and dignitaries. But it wasn't just her nights that were filled with extravagance. Margaret's mornings were equally modern. Picture this, breakfast in bed at 9 a.m., followed by two hours of lounging, listening to the radio, and smoking cigarettes. 
It wasn't until 12.30 p.m. that she would finally rise, kickstarting her day with a bracing vodka pick-me-up. Talk about living like royalty. Even Margaret's wardrobe was the envy of fashionistas worldwide. She reportedly packed a wardrobe worth $10,000 for a single week-long trip to the United States in 1965. It was quite an astronomical sum for the time, yet her extravagance was not limited to food and clothing. The princess was known to demand motorcycle escorts for even short trips, like the journey from Kensington Palace to Waterloo Station. Intrigued by the glittering world of royalty, smash the subscribe button and become a part of more such stories. However, behind the glitz and glamour, Margaret's personal life was as captivating as her public persona. In the early 1950s, she fell deeply in love with group captain Peter Townsend, a royal equerry. Their relationship, doomed from the start due to Townsend's divorce status, caused a scandal that rocked the monarchy and captured global attention. In 1955, Margaret publicly renounced her plans to marry Townsend, a decision that garnered her worldwide sympathy but left her heartbroken. This episode marked a turning point in Margaret's life, cementing her image as a tragic romantic figure. But the princess wasn't one to wallow in heartbreak for long. Though her first love ended in disappointment, Margaret's romantic journey was far from over. In 1960, Margaret married photographer Antony Armstrong Jones in a lavish ceremony, the first royal wedding to be televised. Their honeymoon was a six-week extravaganza aboard the royal yacht Britannia, costing an eye-watering $115,000 at the time. I mean, they were royalty, of course they'd have royal honeymoons, right? The couple had two children. Their first son named David was born in 1961, and a daughter Sarah blessed the house in 1964. It all sounds perfect, however. Their marriage was far from a fairy tale. Both Margaret and Armstrong Jones engaged in public affairs, leading to a separation in 1976 and divorce in 1978. This was the first royal divorce in 400 years. It was yet again the rebellious nature of Margaret that kept her from abiding by the rules. Even as her marriage faced challenges, Margaret continued to embrace a life of luxury and indulgence. She had a unique system for financing her extravagances, often using her royal status to obtain things for free, including regular hair appointments and shopping trips to Harrods. Her love for the finer things in life was well known, from impromptu helicopter rides to chauffeured limousines and exclusive vacations. Other than the material stuff, the princess loved a fun time as well. Margaret's parties were legendary, often lasting into the early hours of the morning. While Margaret enjoyed the privileges of royal life in Britain, it was on a distant Caribbean island where she truly found her personal paradise. 4,000 miles away, the private island in the Caribbean became a symbol of her wealthy lifestyle, named Les Jolies Oak. The villa was a wedding gift from her friend, Colin Tennant, serving as her private paradise where she could escape the pressures of royal life and entertain friends in ultimate luxury. But with great privilege came great scrutiny, and Margaret's life was not without its share of controversies. Her rebellious nature often put her at odds with royal protocol. She was known to sign checks simply as Margaret and frequently arrived late to formal dinners, much to the chagrin of more traditional royals. Rumors of affairs dogged her throughout her life, with speculation linking her romantically to high-profile figures like Mick Jagger and even Pablo Picasso. While many of these rumors were likely exaggerated, they added to Margaret's reputation as a royal rebel. Her heavy smoking and drinking habits were also a source of concern, with the princess known to smoke up to 60 cigarettes a day, a habit that would eventually take a severe toll on her health. As the years passed, the price of Margaret's luxurious lifestyle and habits began to take its toll. She suffered from lung problems, migraines, and a series of strokes largely attributed to her lifetime of heavy smoking and drinking. In her later years, she withdrew from public life, making fewer and fewer appearances. Despite her declining health, Margaret remained an active member of the royal family for as long as she could, serving as president of several organizations, including the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children and the Royal Ballet. Margaret's life was a study in contrasts. Born into immense privilege, she struggled with the constraints of her royal role. Her glamorous lifestyle and rebellious spirit made her a media darling, but also brought her criticism and heartache. Throughout it all, Margaret remained unapologetically herself, witty, charming, and fiercely independent. She pushed the boundaries of what it meant to be a royal in the 20th century, paving the way for future generations to carve out their own paths. 
Today, Princess Margaret is remembered not just as a royal, but as a complex, flawed, and deeply human figure. Her life serves as a fascinating glimpse into a bygone era of royal glamour and scandal. From her lavish lifestyle to her controversial personal life, Princess Margaret's story continues to remind us that even within the boundaries of royalty, the human spirit yearns for freedom, love, and self-expression.